Okay, so we are going to start our Instagram presentation today. Vamos a empezar nuestra presentación de Instagram hoy. So first we're going to set up interpretation on Zoom. Primero vamos a establecer la interpretación en Zoom. Um, so once I activate the language interpretation feature, it is not on yet, but when I do, you will see a globe icon appear in your web controls. Entonces, una vez yo active la interpretación, aún no está activada, van a ver ese globo terráqueo en su, en su información allá abajo en la pantalla. You will have to click on that globe, click the language that you would like to hear. Y vas a hacer clic en el globo terráqueo y escoger el idioma que quiere escuchar. You will also have the option to mute original audio so that you hear the interpreted language only. También tiene la opción de escuchar el idioma interpretado y silenciar el otro idioma de otra de esa manera evita escuchar dos voces. Welcome Dorothy. Bienvenida Dorothy. Um, so on a tablet or cell phone, you will have to click on the three dots that say more to access language interpretation. Para acceder a la interpretación, si está en una tableta, en un teléfono inteligente, debe hacer, los, eh, hacer clic en los tres punticos abajo. After clicking on the three points, you must tap language interpretation. Y una vez ya eh, seleccione los tres puntos, entonces escoge el idioma que quiere que sea interpretado. You must click the language that you'd like to hear and like the same um, options as before, you'll have the ability to mute the original audio. Manténgase con el lenguaje de la interpretación, por favor, y va a tener también esa opción de que pueda silenciar el lenguaje original. And uh, most importantly, if you are joining from a computer, or, uh, or if you're joining from a tablet or cell phone, you must click done at the end to activate the language interpretation. Y una vez activa el idioma, si está en una tableta o en un teléfono, es muy importante que active la palabra done. Click en done y así puede continuar con la interpretación. Are there any questions? Hay alguna pregunta? If not, I will uh, enable the language interpretation feature. Si no, oh, ya voy a I, I can't get on, so I don't know what the. Oh no, Dorothy, are you joining from a computer right now? Yes, I am, but go ahead. I can't get on. I don't want to stop you. Okay. Um, are you having difficulty navigating to the Zoom screen? No, I have uh, interpretation on tablet or smartphone. Oh, okay. Sounds good. And then it says language interpretation on the right. And I clicked on English and... Okay, I just uh, started the language interpretation feature. So the globe icon should appear or you'll have to click on the three dots that say more to access the language interpretation. Okay. Which one is three dots? Mm -hmm. That's a more, and you have to click down to find- Oh, see more is three, is, is three dots there, all right, but nothing's happening. When you click it? Just it, three dots? Yeah, and when you click it, it should show you a bunch of options. And uh, interpretation will be one of the options. Isn't she on a computer? It says language interpretation, and then it says English, original audio, English, and Italian. Perfect. You're on the right one then. Well, how do I get rid of it then? Did you click on the language and press done or X the? Yeah, I did. I clicked on English, but it's not going away it's not going away i clicked on english should i click on click done yes okay let's try that no it didn't go away no it didn't go away let me see if i could get one of these kids they're they're better at it than me okay so you I go can... ahead and then i'll see if they can't get it okay sounds good thank you okay What about other folks? Uh, are you able to join the channel? 
I will join the English channel. Now. Yes, I have the English channel. Yeah, Cora. Um, this is Maureen of Bismuth. On my screen, I have to wait a few minutes before it comes up. I, I see this. I, I see this in the past and I just have to wait. It's not up yet. So okay. Um I yeah. Thank you for communicating that need, access need. All right. Hi, Constance. Thank you for joining us. We just enabled language interpretation. Hi. So what am I supposed to do on this page? So you should see if you're joining from a computer, a globe icon appear at the bottom of your screen. And no, I'm, I'm on my phone because I couldn't get in with my computer. I don't know what was going on. No worries. <sighs> then you'll have um, to click on the three dots that see more. Isn't she on a computer? Constance is joining from a, a phone right now. I guess I can't it, hear. It, do you see the three, the three dots that say more? <laughs> yes, I do. My oh. phone is totally messed up. And so I'm amazed I even got in here. It's been, it's been <laughs> messed up for two days, seriously. Oh. oh, goodness. Thank you for being here. Okay, wait a minute. Here you go. It, it, it did click in there. Oh, perfect. Okay. So then you're just going to click interpretation and English as your language. Um, I don't do anything and I, I'm fine. You know, those of us who speak English, uh, we don't have really have to do anything. The issue is um, if someone who is in the Spanish channel wants to speak, you won't hear their audio or what they're trying to say. That's why we're having everybody put English, um, even if they are speaking English as their language. All right. How how's it going, Constance? Were you able to click it? I see it, but um, I don't know if I'm on your page or my page. Um. Oh, it's because this PowerPoint slides are on the setting. Um. It's just jumping around, so I guess I'm just gonna have to do it. just let it be. Okay, sounds good. Because my screen is like jumping around and doing things. Okay, no yeah. worries. Thank you. Yeah. So as long as I can hear, I'll just have to roll with it. Okay. Yeah. Well, mine says language justice now. Oh, perfect. Yes, I just changed the slides. Oh, okay then. Well, maybe I was on there all the time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we're going to get started with our language justice principles. Unless people have questions, we can keep going. Okay, perfect. Um, so language justice is a commitment to have open and equal communication for all. It is a shared responsibility, just like disability access. Everyone just set up interpretation on Zoom to ensure that everyone can equally participate. And we're going to ask that everybody please state your name every time before you speak so the interpreters know who is speaking. Some tips for all of us to keep in mind. Please speak slowly and clearly. Think about key points you wanna make and keep it brief so you can take your time. Don't use acronyms, jargon, or abbreviations because these aren't translated well in other languages. And even if you may be multilingual, we ask that for the sake of Zoom interpretation features, you stick to one language for the call. Next, we're going to move on to our land acknowledgement section. So the practice of land acknowledgement is an offering to deep deeply engage in our collective space, place, history, positionality with the intention of centering native folks or indigeneity. Um, I have linked a helpful guide that helps identify native lands that you are occupying. It'll be shared in the end of the uh, course email as well, but it is just nativeland.ca um, to access. And I will also uh, 
uh, send an offering to pay Shumi land tax to the Sigoriate uh, Land Trust, um, who are a collective of urban native women who are committed to cultural revitalization and against colonization. So um, if you do have extra funds, um, I highly encourage you to consider donating to them. Um, and so if you are joining us from San Francisco, that is Rumetush Ohlone lands. If you're joining us from the East Bay or Oakland, that is traditionally um, Chechenyo Ohlone or Miss John territory. And so now I will extend an offering to see if anyone else would like to participate in the land acknowledgement, either um, by sharing where they are out loud or in the chat. I would like to share a little prayer, okay? Yes, thank you. May I do the land acknowledgement, please? Yes. Okay. Um, we would like to thank the spirits of this land, the ancestors of the land, whether, what, whether, uh, what kind of Ohlone they may be or where, from where, the ancestors of wherever we may be. Um, we'd like to thank you for taking such good care of the land for so many centuries. We'd like you to thank you for um, and ask for your permission to be here today. And we ask permission to have a good meeting. And we ask you ancestors of these lands to, to bless us and to bless our teachers and to, um, to guide us to do good with the knowledge we're gonna learn today on my relations, hope. Thank you for sharing that, Bonisita. My name is Regina Lynn. I am on Ohlone and Chochinyo land. And I acknowledge this is occupied land and I am grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Regina. Would anyone else like to share either in the chat or out loud? I would like to share something too. <clears throat> this is Maria Guadalupe. May I share mm -hmm. something? that I just realized like 10 years ago, I never knew that on my father's side, I have um, blood of the indigenous people here in the area of Anaheim, here in California. Oh, it's wow. a tribe that probably disappeared or something like that. My aunt told me she has 25% of uh, indigenous and she was she's the baby sister of my father and she told me, you might have at least 12.5% of indigenous from this area in California. So I have more from Mexico and from here. Mm. So yes, I acknowledge, as, as you were saying, um, I have this fight inside of me, the conqueror and the people that were conquest at that time. And um, I think that is uh, a little problematic, but I accept what I am, right? <laughs> That's the, I love what I am. I think that is the best for me to have of all the parts that I have in, inside of me. So yes, when I knew that, I, I understood why I always was longing to come over to California. And uh, I did it when I was very young. Thank you. Thank you to the land. Thank you to the, the part of the land that is in me and in my, my, my family too. Thank you. Thank you, Lupita, that was beautiful. Look. And in the chat, DG says that I acknowledge that I am on Ohlone land. I am grateful for their care of it. Thank you, DG. Thank you so much everybody for participating in the land acknowledgement. Um, and I am grateful for everybody's shared reflections in this space. Um, and I'm glad that we are moving the conversation to show the histories that uh, collide with one another in our, in our sharings as well. We have one more acknowledgement. Joy De La Luz in the chat says, I identify as immigrant from one stolen land to this one and a welcome guest of the Ohlone. Thank you, Regina. All right. 
So with that, we're gonna keep going. Thank you everybody for participating and for hearing new voices share um, land acknowledgements this time. Thank you. Next, we'll move over to community guidelines. I'll read through them again and pause at the end to see if anyone wants to share any more. No bigotry, hate, or slander will be tolerated. Assume positive intent. All truth is truth. Take space, make space. The Vegas rule. So what is learned here leaves here, but what is said here stays here. Each one, reach one, teach one. Ask permission to inquire after a share. Practice self and community care. One mic, one voice. Correct with care. Don't assume knowledge. If you're using academic jargon or abbreviations, please explain the terms. And appreciate cultures through community. Would anyone like to add any additional community guidelines? Okay. Next, we're going to move into the check-in question. I apologize, I mixed up the dates for the presentation and don't actually have Spanish translated language for the majority of these slides. But um, when you receive the course packets, they will be translated in both English and Spanish. But I apologize. Hey, Sergio, it's Tomasita, how are you? Hey, good, good, how about yourself? Well, I'm, uh, I just opened up my bank statement. <laughs> so Masita, I'm going to mute you um, so that you can take that phone call. But uh, so for the rest of us, we're going to start our checking question, which is what color reflects your current mood and why? So I'm going to stop my screen share and see if anybody has responses to that question. I'm sorry, say it again. What color what? Reflects your mood and why? <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have to think about this one. Check in with yourself. I am the color orange because I am excited and creative. Thank you, Regina. And please also state your name. Oh, my name is Regina. My color today is orange because I am excited and I am feeling creative. Yay. Thank you, Regina and Lupita, your hand is up. Yes, uh, Maria Guadalupe. Uh, my uh, mood is not good today, so probably between orange and red. I, I don't know because of what happened with the trials, what's been happening with justice at the courts. I feel really outraged for everything what I'm seeing. And uh, in the news, unfortunately, I was kept watching news over the weekend, and I don't feel very good about that. I feel upset, angry, um, a little depressed, and uh, frustrated. Thank you, but you're asking. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Thank you for your honest check-in reflection. We embrace all emotion in this space. So. Would anyone else like to share? I can share. I feel like gray blue color because when I think of my mood, I think of like a wave. So someone just like rolling with the motions of my life right now, but also like finding heights and low points in it too. So I feel like with holidays, that's kind of what it is. Like I get to make all this food, but I have to eat all the food and, and all of that, so. <laughs> What about you, Jose? Do you have uh, a color that reflects your mood? Jeez. Um, 
I'll talk anyway. <laughs> but I have on blue today. I have on blue today, and uh, maybe blue reflects my mood because I chose it out of the closet, the closet and put it on. I have a whole lot of cl uh, colors in my closet, mm -hmm. and I decided to wear powder blue today. But anyway, um, this is Monday, and uh, Monday usually uh, doesn't really start out very exciting, I can tell you that. So that's mean today, Blue Monday, I guess, as you, I would say, you know, because I've been tired all day. Mm, the Monday blues. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Cora. And I feel red, bright, hot, full of energy. Wow, Cora, you're going to be throwing the energy punches for us then. Would anyone else like to share? Uh, yes, this is Linda Dorma. Uh, I don't feel too hot today. <laughs> I haven't felt too hot the whole month. But I think my color is moody like an air cloud just kind of floating around in the universe trying to find stability. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Maybe we can spend some time grounded together through the presentation. I'd be curious since there's people who feel out of sorts or not how what they feel they need would like or to if they wanted anything to help them uh in terms of their mood what would be helpful not necessarily from other people but just what would be helpful wow thank you for that anna taking charge of the class. <laughs> but yeah, I agree. I think that's a great reflection. I feel like for me, when I feel ungrounded and feel like I have a lot of time I've spent behind the screen, I like to trace the outline of my fingers and I like to breathe as I come up and then exhale as I go down my fingers. And then I kind of just do this motion back and forth of breathing while tracing my finger to calm myself. Maybe we can try it now. So stick your hand in front of your face. Breathe in. Hold at the top. Breathe out. And you can lower it however it feels good. But be audible with it. If you need to mute yourself, do that big inhale, the big exhale. That seems like a very sweet exercise. Thank you for suggesting it. I'd love to hear other people's exercises. Or just what they feel what is helpful to them, whatever it may be. For me, can you hear me? Because I'm just pushing buttons on the back on the computer and phone. I <laughs> hear you, Constance. OK, so. You know, in general, I ask myself the question is, what's the problem? What's the solution? How can I make it better? And, you know, of course, you start out by counting your blessings. You know, um, I, I am sheltered, not where I want to be. But, I, you know, I have a roof over my head. And then when you start listing things, it does make you feel better. I feel, um, was that Regina? I see her face, but I don't remember the name. When she's saying the things about the trial, well, then you probably know, and I probably know, we don't really need to be watching that much television on it. You know, get the general thing because it will it burns us, you know. So, and the other sister, um, there's a painting, it's called Women Do Get Weary. And then remember the other one, um, was the oldest reading, Women Do Get Weary. And, uh, so, you know, we just have to focus, you know, it is a day, good day. Miracles happen every day. Mm -hmm. We don't know when ours is going to happen. You need to say that every day. 
the best is yet to come and miracles happen every day. So we have a lot to be grateful for, even though things aren't right, you know? So when you say these kinds of things, I think it helps you persist. And then uh, call up your grandchildren or some little kid, because they're always happy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, that was so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that offering with us. All right, well, thank you, everybody. I know that the holiday times tend to be a very stressful um, and uh, action-filled time. And so for taking the time to come to this course and to continue our learning as a community, like I thank each and every one of you for showing up today. Um, and it's hard and uh, to manage and juggle everything while you stay grounded. So um, yeah, hope some of the um, tools that we learned today will help you as you scroll through your timeline and your information online, um, because our presentation is actually starting with fake news today. So I will... Excuse me. This is Dorothy Cook. Did you say fake news? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish this was fake news we were getting to today i can tell you that uh, you know somebody run into a parade and kill five people and you just had a family dispute oh come on you guys yeah okay it's bad all right well deep breaths everybody we're gonna get through a class today and we'll get through another one on wednesday and uh yeah so we just did our check-in we're gonna have our presentation on fake news, how to determine what's real, what's not online. Then we're going to have a series of presentations explaining different features on Instagram. We'll have community presentations on Wednesday from Oakland Rising and um, Segoria Te Land Trust. We'll have um, another presentation that will tie in all of what we've learned in class so the three different apps, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram are often used by community organizations to wield power online. So we'll hear how the three kind of intersect, what tools we can use to, to really generate and hold onto all three. And lastly, we'll have a presentation on censorship on Instagram because unfortunately private companies that are run under this economic model of capitalism always try to change the rules of what makes posts successful on these apps to allow only a select number of people to remain successful on um, promoting their, their content. And so we teach censorship and the rules of censorship to claim back power in that system. And so that our posts as community members can be successful too. All right. So now we're just gonna move into our presentation on how to tell if information that you're seeing on social media is true. Social media can provide instant news and it can have a great wealth of knowledge, but it is crucial to verify and determine if the information you're viewing is true. Here are some items to help you consider um, if and of what you're reading is truthful online. Um, especially in the age of government surveillance and how much corporations have an effect on our media, certain things will always fit an imperialist narrative. That means you'll never see the truth if it's backed by a corporation or a government. It's for instance, like the United States. Things like climate change, police brutality, communism and abolition will never be truthfully um, shown in corporate media outlets. So here are some tips to help you check the reliability of a post, the location of the poster. Are they in a place um, that they are tweeting and posting about it? So is it a place you recognize? Is it a community organization that supports this? Um, so it's good to check where the posters are actually located. Is it just online? Is it just on this one building? Network. Who is in their network and who follows them? Do I know this account? Do you recognize the account that's posting about the information you're reading? Um, most often than not on social media, oftentimes you don't know who the person is following, but you can see 
mutual friends that follow them or mutual people um, and whether or not that's enough to get you to uh, accept their truth. Content. Can the information be corroborated from other sources? This means, am I able to search this information and find it somewhere else? Um, if you can, then that checks the reliability of the information you're seeing because you can find multiple places that say the same thing. Ten contextual updates. Do they usually post or tweet on this topic? Are they claiming to be experts on this field? If so, what did the past or updated posts say? Do they have more details elsewhere? So it's just to check, like, are they doing their homework? Are they updating the information that they're talking about? Um, where do they say they're getting their information from? And so it's important to, to check these things online. Age, when was the post made? Be wary of recently created accounts. So accounts that have been made in two weeks will not have as reliable information as an account that has been on social media for 10 years. Um, so just like that difference in age is important when you're looking at information online. Reliability, is the source of information reliable? Um, can you verify and say that, oh, I know people who are part of this organization. I personally know my uh, like friend or family member works for this organization and does their homework and does their research. Or um, I know a lot of people in my community who um, go to these organizing groups and the information that they share at their meetings are true. And so therefore I, I believe what's on their social media accounts or something. Um, so again, to say that there's multiple ways you can check information to make sure it's true. So now I'm going to show a short video on fake news. Um, I'll slow it down slightly so that the interpreters can catch up. It's only a few minutes long. So uh, let me just stop my screen share really quick and share audio because I forgot to do that the first time. Fake news is nothing new, but bogus stories can reach more people more quickly via social media than what good old-fashioned viral emails could accomplish in years past. A lot of these viral claims aren't news at all, but fiction, satire, and efforts to fool readers into thinking they're for real. Here are some strategies to shield yourself from fake news. Are you familiar with the source? Is it legitimate? Has it been reliable in the past? If not, you may not want to trust it. If a provocative headline drew your attention, read a little further before you decide to pass along the shocking information. Even in legitimate news stories, the headline doesn't always tell the whole story. But fake news, particularly efforts to be satirical, can include several revealing signs in the text. One fake story even attributed a quote to a dolphin. If that had been real, you could argue they buried the lead. Another telltale sign of a fake story is often the byline, if there even is one. And in some cases, the authors are not even real. One story was credited to a doctor who won 14 Peabody Awards and a handful of Pulitzer Prizes. Which would be very impressive if it wasn't also totally made up. Many times these bogus stories will cite official or official sounding sources. But once you look into it, the source doesn't back up the claim. Some false stories aren't completely fake but rather distortions of real events. These mendacious claims can take a legitimate news story and twist what it says, or even claim that something that happened long ago is related to current events. One deceptive website took a story that was over a year old from CNN and slapped on a new, misleading headline and publication date. So on top of the deception, 
there was copyright infringement. Remember, there is such a thing as satire. Normally it's clearly labeled as such, and sometimes it's even funny. But it isn't the news. And then there's the more debatable forms of satire, designed to pull one over on the reader. These posts are also designed to encourage clicks and generate money for the creator through ad revenue. But they aren't news. We know this is difficult. Confirmation bias leads people to put more stock in information that confirms their beliefs and discount information that doesn't. But the next time you're automatically appalled at some social media post concerning, say, a politician you oppose, take a moment to check it out. Try this simple test. What other stories have been posted to the news website that is the source of the story that just popped up in your social media feed? You may be predisposed to believe a story about a politician you don't like, but if the alleged news site also features a story about guardians from Antarctica retaliating against America by hitting New Zealand with an earthquake, maybe you should think twice before sharing. And yes, that earthquake story is a real example of a fake story that popped up. We know you're busy, and some of this debunking takes time, but fact checkers get paid to do this kind of work. Between factcheck.org, Snopes.com, The Washington Post Fact Checker, and PolitiFact.com, it's likely at least one has already fact checked the latest viral claim to pop up in your social media newsfeed. Okay, I won't go into those sources because some of them are politically um, US backed sources that they're asking you to use to fact check information, which again, have a lot of corporate power behind it. And so I probably wouldn't use those to fact check things either. Um, but I will show, uh, I will show um, fake. ways that we can verify fake news. So never share a post on social media without fact checking. This means looking for so sources, checking to see if the um, social media outlet has um, published similar stories of the sort, if there are um, other organizations they tag, if there's other places or ways that they are sharing that information, like checking that is always important. So looking for sources, considering the story's agenda. So what are they trying to persuade you to do? What um, is the purpose of sharing this information? And really thinking about why it's coming up on your newsfeed. Don't discount stories that play to emotions, but view them with caution. So if you are having an emotional reaction to something that has been shared on social media, think, is this the intended reaction that they had? Why are they trying to bring that emotion forward? Um, and uh, but also view them with caution. So maybe it is real life and maybe it is something that is um, happening. And so um, again, checking to make sure that it's in multiple places and, and all these things and that um, you have people to talk to about it. When um, possible, it is best to follow small local organizations whose purpose is to educate the public. And so I'll give a list of uh, accounts that will be good to follow that kind of fit this criteria along a range of different um, public education issues um, to say that I won't leave you um, in the dark after giving you all these tips. I'll give you um, the sources that I follow too. So here are specific Facebook accounts that I follow. So here we have Anti-Police Terror Project, Flying Over Walls, which is an abolition group, um, black and pink in San Francisco Bay Area, Plaza Justa, or Just Cause. Um, they also did a community presentation earlier. Mujeres Unidas y Activas um, for immigrant rights issues, tenants together for housing related issues, as well as um, Housing Rights Committee San Francisco. 
Um, there's the Disability Justice League, um, as well as the Disability Ju uh, Culture Club, which I forgot to put on here. The Indigenous Environmental Network that does good jobs at updating people on climate change related catastrophes. Um, and Senior Disability Action. So these are just a few of the accounts that I follow. If you did want to start following um, specific public education accounts, um, I would love to also hear what accounts other folks are following if they do use Facebook and you can either use the chat to see what they're using or um, tell me or message me and I can also share that with us as well. All right, and so I am now going to make a recommendations for Twitter accounts and you'll see that there is a lot of overlap between the accounts that I uh, follow on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. So you'll see that some of these are located on all the platforms. We have Telesur, which is um, good for um, uh, South American, Latin American updates uh, in the news. There's an English version that I follow. Um, Oakland Abolition and Solidarity. Um, I also have their tags or their usernames in case you wanna try searching for them later. Um, we have Sins Invalid, which is a disability justice, public education uh, sort of uh, a community group. We have the People's Programs, Coalition on Homelessness, CCWP, which is the California um, Collective of Women's Prisoners, I believe. So um, information directly from prisoners in the United States uh, facilities, um, explaining what the conditions in prisons are like. The Decolonial Atlas, so um, is an account that specifically thinks about land and mapping um, and uh, geography in a decolonial lens. So thinking about nativeness as opposed to colonization as the trendsetter for how we should think about the world. Um, Red Canary Song is an immigrant sex worker collective um, that does a lot of good work uh, for sex workers. No Name is a Chicago rapper that I specifically followed that does a lot of information on public education that's really helpful on Twitter. Um, the Nap Ministry is a great um, rest powered account run by black women who are um, very uh, good at expressing all the things that are wrong with capitalism and encourage us to think about rest as restorative transformative practices senior and disability action. Um, and Left in the Bay is uh, histories of the um, San Francisco East Bay area um, and uh, recovering histories that have been stolen or lost throughout the years. Um, so these are just some Twitter accounts that I follow. And lastly, these are Instagram accounts that I follow. We have Berkeley Cop Watch the California Coalition for Women Prisoners, again, CCWP, uh, Critical Resistance, Defund um, SFPD, Decolonizing Therapy, to think of therapeutic practices not in Western terms of um, therapist uh, and patient. The Body is Not an Apology, it's also another disability justice um, organization. Segoria Taste Land Trust, Save the Shell Mounds, the Nap Ministry again, Hood Herbalism, and Seeding Sovereignty are other um, herbal and indigenous based groups that are amazing to check out if uh, you have the time on Instagram. Are there any questions? I know that was a lot of information that we just covered, and so I want to see how people are feeling. Okay, what's the difference between Twitter and Instagram? So um, Twitter was the social media platform that we covered last week. And this week we're going to start covering Instagram. Um, so Instagram is more of a platform that is based on sharing photos with captions to people that you know. Um, versus Twitter, uh, I explained as like a community forum where you're having live conversations with people. You can have images, you can have GIFs, you can have those sorts of visual aspects, but they aren't necessary on Twitter. On Instagram, you have to put a picture or some sort of visual with every post you make. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ellen? What were the fact check places to go? 
Oh, um, I'm going to, so Ellen is actually raising her hand. So I'm going to pick on Ellen first and Vichy, then you can answer or ask your question. I have a question. Um, between the two, Twitter and Instagram, is there a demographic that's attractive to one over the other? Joy, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, so actually Ellen is about to ask a question and then oh, sorry. after, but I can take your question after Vichy. Okay, fine. Okay. Ellen, what's your question? My question is, early in this presentation, you said that one of the ways to check whether you want to follow someone or an account is to find out where they're located. But how do you do that? So um, you can typically tell by the location of the post. So actually scrolling through and seeing where if they tag any sort of location on their um, social media posts, that's a good way to check. You could also do a simple Google search of a group. Um, and oftentimes that'll come up, their location, their physical location. You could also just directly ask the account too. So you could message, if there's a message button or a way to communicate with them, you could ask that way as well. Um, so it, all these are different ways to get the same information of finding out where they're from. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Vichy? Yes, I wanted to, I didn't catch the names of those places you go to fact check. Okay, so um, I actually don't recommend the ones that were um, shared in the video. Uh, so there was a video playing and they started talking about the Washington Post as a fact checker, poly, poly check and all of those. I personally wouldn't recommend them um, just because it depends on the issue that you're looking at. Um, like if you're looking at things that are climate change related or um, abolition or carceral centered, typically these organizations will not have information on there that is accurate. Um, and so it's best to actually cross check it with what other organizations that you are comfortable with are saying. So that can mean organizations that are on these social media accounts or trying to look through some of these to see if they're organizations that you would support um, uh, for, for political or public education. But um, yeah, so I, I can also send specific fact checkers, but unfortunately there isn't like a one-stop shop website that allows you to check the information. You kind of have to do your own digging, um, look at who the account is, where the date was when it was published, who's interacting with that post to get a full picture of what you're seeing um, in terms of the information. Yes, but you listed uh, Snopes, and fact check, those are addresses you go to to uh, see what they think is a fact. <laughs> yeah, so I think that was in this video. I think they talked about it at the end. Consult the expert. To do this kind of work between fact check. So this is the first one they talked about. It was factchecked.org. And the second one was snopes.com, S-N-O-P-E-S dot com. Oh, well, that's all, huh? I thought there were more. And you said not to particularly go to the Washington. Washington. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the last one we gave. Yeah. Thank you. Of course. And Joy? I, sorry, I didn't realize that um, I electronically raised my hand this time. Sorry mm -hmm. for the future, I'll do that. Thank you. Um, my question was about demographics. Is there a demographic that's attractive to one over the other between Twitter and Instagram? Hmm. I think, uh, yeah, we did discuss, I think Twitter and Instagram, I think the Instagram users tend to be younger in age than Twitter users. I think the most active users on Twitter are 25 to 34 um, versus I think um, Instagram, it's slightly lower in age. Um, I think it's like the 18 to 24 sort of range that is most active on there. 
But to say that there is a lot of crossover over the, the demographics that use Instagram and Twitter, I think Twitter tends to be a little older too, though. Um, Twitter tends. Mm -hmm. is, it, does it, um, is it also an issue of what the topic is being, like, for example, photographers will use Instagram yes. more yes. often than Twitter because Twitter is more text oriented, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so I guess there's a crossover depending if we're talking about social justice, which would be more used with the, you know, on social, because the Me Too movement covers older women as well, you know, mm -hmm. more mature women and like that. So how do you? So we'll actually get into this because I think most community organizations at this point actually use all three together. Ah, okay. To pack like a power punch and to get as many people as possible. And so we'll talk a little bit about how this is actually done, um, actually in this presentation too, because um, we'll be talking about social media toolkits, why an organization would use one, things like that. Um, okay, great. Yeah, so we'll, we'll go over like what is best practices and why even like when I was sharing the information of organizations that I trust and follow, you'll notice that a lot of them are, all, are on all three. Um, all three or, if not they're on two and but typically every organization specializes in one with doing outreaches and like extending its its branches out to the other organizations too okay so they so commonly uh depending on the organization they'll choose one primary one and the other two as auxiliaries okay great thank you yes thank you for asking those questions awesome does anyone else have any more questions? Um, this is Maureen. Um, there's one site that I follow on Instagram. So like if we join these different sites, does that open up your account to all these people or? No. Can you, can you still stay private and see all yeah. this stuff? Oh, okay. So oh. when you follow another organization on Instagram, it's not that all those followers have access to your account. It's just oh. that one account. Okay. So whoever's managing that one account behind a phone is able to see it only ex if you accept their like friend or follow request on your account. Okay, great. Oh, great. Okay, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they can't see you. Okay. All right, I will keep going unless there's any more questions. I have one actually in extension to the last question, which is in terms of security, if you wanted to um, get the news but not be identified by the FBI or whatever, is that um, is the protection strategy that you just mentioned? It does it is it a say does it keep the participant safe from being investigated by, or I guess the word is surveilled, right? Yeah, um, that, that's a little tricky of a question, um, particularly because it depends on how much of a presence you're building for yourself online. So are you using your full name on your accounts? Are you giving your age, your location on your accounts? Um, is that information that's readily accessible to your friends because chances are like government surveillance will like top that, like you won't know that you're being surveilled. Um, and so I guess it's a question of like give and take on the accounts that you're searching for public information. For instance, um, I use my Twitter a lot for public education and I don't have my name, my phone number. None of that information is tied to that account because I know that I'm following very radical accounts that are susceptible to surveillance. And so that's why that's as anonymous of an account as I can make it um, for the purpose of my education. Um, but you can choose to do that with any sort of these accounts that you want to on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, but it's just what has worked for me has been Twitter and th therefore I use it, but I could have done the same thing in Instagram or I could have done the same thing for Facebook. Okay, so it's safe to say that you can use an alias or a, you know, a, another kind of name to sign up for any of these social, it just if security, like, if security is your main uh, 
concern, then you can be safe by using a name other than your own real legal name, like you just exemplified, right? That so that whether that that's the reason why I haven't signed up for any because I haven't really figured out what name I want to sign up under so so that I could be protected. But that's a useful answer. Thank you, Bisma. Of course, and yeah, all all of these are just honest reflections of someone who's um, used Instagram while also understanding that I have like um, my life is just not um, like built to um, withhold white supremacy. And so that's the reason why I um, strategically have placed my um, involvement in social media in a very particular way. And so I'm happy to share that journey with all of you since I've learned a lot in that time. Okay, um, this is Maureen, just one quick question. Um, but they can track your account back to your email though, right? Yeah, so find out who you are. Use my like middle school email for. So oh, yeah, okay. email that I don't really care that much about if, if someone has access to. So yeah, that's the other thing is like making sure that if this isn't remembering the purpose of the account, what it's intended to be used for, um, if there are surveillance issues or, or things of that sort, what are other stops you're putting along the way so that um, no information can be tied back to you. Okay. And uh, Regina, right. I see your hands up. Yes, I just wanted to um, lift up the chat. Um, this is from Anna. Michael Moore has addressed these privacy questions on his podcast. You can also write to him and ask your questions. He addresses social media and communication of ideas. Thank you, Anna, for providing another resource. Yes, you're welcome. And Ruby M has asked, has said, I was wondering how the idea for this workshop course came about. Are you hoping to provide more social media skills to people who want to use social media for activism? I appreciate your help on this. Yeah, thank you for those questions. And thank you, Regina, for reading the chat out loud. And to answer your question, Ruby, this class is designed to help seniors and people with disabilities get comfortable with social media. So building up the basics to it, while also having a community uh, serving lens to it. So thinking about social media as digital advocacy. So thinking about how we could become better, better digital organizers together. Both Anna and Ruby, thank you. Yes, thank you. And uh, uh, if one of the translators can actually translate that um, message by Anna, I can then put it at the end of the week's emails, if that's possible. And Tomasita said, this is much needed by me. Thank you. Thanks. All right, so with that, we'll start um, going into and diving straight into what's Instagram, unless there's any other questions. I know that was a abrupt transition. Okay, cool. So we're just, uh, unless, actually let's do a bio break. Um, we packed in a lot of information during those sessions, so Please take a five minute break and be back at 416. All right, everybody, welcome back. And for folks who are off camera, can you send like a reaction so we know you're there? Praise the Lord, I'm here. <laughs> Thank you, Cora. Hi, Aria, welcome. Hola, Flor.
Aquí, muy bien. I'm here, thank you. Hello, I'm learning. Yay, thank you, Flor. Sí, muy bien. Hola, Florecita, okay. ¿cómo está? Lupita aquí. Hola, Lupita. Hello, Lupita. Qué guapa se ve. You look so beautiful, Lupita. Gracias, Flor. No hay salón de belleza. I'm sorry, I'm saying to Flor, thank you, but there's no beauty parlor. I have to, I have to wear my, my hair as it is. <laughs> I love straight hair, you know that. <laughs> I like your curly hair, Lupita. Okay, I'm gonna get started now. So I will start sharing my screen again and we'll go over the um, Instagram presentation now. So what is Instagram? Instagram is a free social media networking service that is for sharing photos and videos. Facebook actually purchased the service in April, 2012 and has owned it ever since. On Instagram, you're able to create a feed on your homepage, which shows the recent posts for everyone to follow. You can like, comment on other people's posts. And there are also stories and IGTV for longer videos. And we'll go through all the different features and functions of Instagram together. So this is just the first time I want you to hear it so that the next time you see it, it gets less scary and more comfortable when you see these terms again. So I want everyone to embrace the terms that they don't know, accept that they might be confused if they didn't hear it the first time um, and know that it'll come up later as well. So we'll define all the terms and all the ways you can be successful on Instagram together. So here is our Instagram terms. Followers are the accounts that have chosen to follow your account. Instagram posts, they appear permanently on your account feed. Anyone who is a follower, so anyone who is following you will see your previous posts unless you delete or archive them. Instagram stories appear as an icon where another account stories um, live. So it's a completely different part of Instagram. And uh, it sits at the top of a homepage and only stays on an account for 24 hours. So this is a specific feature of Instagram is to do Instagram stories. Instagram lives. This is similar to a Facebook live. You can share your live video to your followers at any given time. Homepage. Um, the home screen will appear when you first open Instagram. From here, you'll be able to see the latest posts of the people that you follow on Instagram. You'll notice that the setup is very similar to Facebook for these things. Explorer feed. Posts liked by people whose accounts you've liked. Posts from similar accounts to that you follow or posts with a high engagement. So uh, Explorer feed is similar to like the... Um, trending topics on Twitter or like the um, extra explorer feeds on, on Facebook that now, now they have, but basically it just gives you another way to engage with people that you may not directly follow. Instagram TV or IGTV allows creators to upload high quality, long form vertical videos. So sometimes short documentaries will be featured as IGTV. So um, when you first open, and you'll also notice that Instagram is the most mobile friendly of the social media apps. 
it's actually intended to serve your phone rather than a browser. So I know that for me, for as a, like a senior disability action uh, organizer, I often um, have to use my phone to upload photos on Instagram because of how inaccessible the browser on Instagram tends to be. So I'm not able to complete as many functions through the website of Instagram rather than I am able to do from the app. So this is something to keep in mind, especially for anything, any projects that you have um, to know that you're limited by your phone and limited by sharing on your phone. The home page is the main page that opens up Instagram. So it's this main page here. Um, you see this gray scale PA here. That is the home page. So um, pictures and videos will appear on the profile of of people that you follow. Um, you can also see previews of IGTV and you can click on them directly to view the video to its entirety. Um, and again, on the homepage, this is the section at the top with the little circles of the different accounts you follow with like the little um, like orange and pink gradient halo. These are stories. So these only stay on an account for 24 hours. Um, some people I know only view the stories when they open the app. Some people like viewing the posts. Um, so these are two interactive elements. So sometimes you'll see posts appear as stories. Um, so like to say that some people promote their stories up here too, or their posts on their stories. So they have a bit of an interactive element to them. So again, at the top, Instagram shows the profile pictures of people who have a new story for you to view. Tap one and you'll start to watch the video or the story that they post. Um, you can tap on the right side of the screen to jump from one of the user's stories to another, or you could slide back and forth to skip a person. The stories will continue until you have reached the end of everybody you follow with ads that Instagram ads in, um, in between the stories. So if you actually hit the magnifying glass on the bottom next to the home page button, this is the Instagram Explorer page right here. Um, and so here you'll see like different pictures and users on Instagram that uh, Instagram based on the algorithm that they have set up thinks that they you will like. Um, and so each Explorer page is personalized for each viewer based on how you interact with Instagram. So this page will be different for every person um, who has an Instagram account. You can also hit the search bar at the top. Um, it's not shown here, but there's usually a search bar at the top to look up people that you wanna follow. You can also hit the follow button on the Instagram profiles you wanna to subscribe to if you wanna like see the rest of their posts. From then on, after you click on someone to follow, they'll appear at the home page tab. And the next two tabs here are um, Instagram IGTV reels. So where people upload the big reels you can see. This is a new feature on Instagram that's next to it called the shopping tab. I personally don't have much experience with Shopping on Instagram, I do know that if you are trying to set up a shop, Instagram does take quite a lot of money um, in like service fees from the shop itself. So I know that most people are not very happy with the Instagram shop feature. And then the last icon here is the profile, your own profile on um, Instagram. So Instagram posts are, um, like I had mentioned, either a video or a photo that an Instagram user shares on your profile. It stays for as long as you want. Um, you can delete a post by clicking on the three dots at the top um, and clicking on it and scrolling on the options to delete if you did want to delete. You can also archive it which means that it's inactive for viewers or accounts to view, but you haven't, it's basically like a soft delete. So you can actually check the archive section on the profile section of your account um, to look at posts you've archived, but it's just like a soft, soft delete. So it's not public, but you can still see it privately. So friends or followers on Instagram can like, comment or reshare on your account, on their own account, if their account is public. So by clicking on this little arrow icon, 
you can share it to put specific people. You can also share it to your um, story if you wanted um, the post itself. So, and if you're a public account, other people, your followers can also do the same thing. So next is IGTV, Instagram TV. This is the, um, allows creators to upload high quality, long form vertical videos. So IGTV allows Instagram users to create channels and you can upload videos that are as short as 15 seconds or up to 10 minutes long. If you have a long enough or a large enough following, you can actually have your IGTV last up to 60 minutes. And so this is similar to creating your own channel. So like, just like YouTube has a specific channel, you can create an IGTV channel too. These are just some guidelines on how to upload IGTV videos. So videos must be at least one minute long and IGTV videos can be up to 15 minutes long when you are uploading from a mobile phone. The 60 minutes can be uploaded from a desktop, but again, it's limited to large account features. No matter the length of your video, all your videos must be uploaded in an MP4 file format. The dimensions on um, Instagram uh, IGTV is you can have the vertical videos that aspect ratio of nine to 16 or the horizontal video uh, aspect ratio of 16 to nine. Again, Instagram stories are a feature that uh, Instagram users can use to share videos and stories that only last for 24 hours. They're accessible by clicking on the profile photo or the designated spot in the homepage. Um, to an Instagram story, you can add stickers, timestamps, doodles, um, apl apply certain filters and effects that are only specific to stories. So it's a nice um, interactive way to um, reach a large amount of people who might be clicking through your account. All right, and so I know that I spewed a lot of facts and uh, shared a lot of terms, but now we're actually gonna click through Instagram together. So I'm going to click through the um, browser itself uh, of Instagram so that we can put some of um, like the visuals with the terms we have talked about. But before I start clicking through it, does anyone have any questions? How do we know if we have the, um, the format MP4? So at the end of a file, it'll typically have three letters or four letters that tell you the type of file it is. It could be a dot MP4 is what you're looking for in order to upload an IGTV. Um, for instance, on images, it's .png, .jpg. Um, these tell you that it's a small media file that can go um, and serve as an image online. Um, let's see, what other, .pdf is a common one if you're sharing around a document that um, is supposed to be shared over email, that's another designation. Um, but yeah, so you'll have to look for videos specifically that are marked with dot mp4 at the end or you'll have to search for converters for the video so all you have to do is put in your file name and say um dot mv mov if that's the file you have to mp4 converter and you can convert the video that way okay thank you mm -hmm. i have a question this is joy um is there a, an advantage over the other if you decide to how do you decide if it's better to post on instagram a short video versus on youtube it's up to you i feel like um instagram you can have an account um and and have a page at the same time and kind of shoot like um one-off videos that you kind of create versus on youtube it's an entire channel dedicated to videos so you don't have the option of posting like small photos or something that you take, 
but rather you have to create that content every time on YouTube versus on Instagram. Um, for instance, you can do the post, you can do the IGTV whenever you have capacity to, but you can still engage with people simply by showing a photo to them. Okay, thank you. Okay, this is Dorothy Cook, but you have to create a following, right? Yes, so you have to create a following and um, that can be done by using hashtags, finding pulling particular interested groups to it, um, asking your friends and family to follow an account. Those are easy ways to try and increase, but it, it is building, it's power building, it's community building. So um, for instance, like on um, uh, senior and disability actions, um, before I started, I think we had about, um, I think it was like 300 something followers. And ever since I've joined the team and started moving and creating more content that can go on our social media, we have 500 followers right now. So to give you a sense that like, it took six months for a community organization with the capacity of senior and disability action to build 200 followers in the time I've worked here. But yeah, it's, um, you have to be very consistent with it to build a following. So the following is really based on a theme, right? So SDA started to get a following because people got to know the content that was being put out by SDA, right? Whereas like an Instagram, are you saying that Instagram, you can be kind of random and frivolous and creative that way? You can. And, develop, mm -hmm. and then develop a following based on your personality versus, I know, because people post pictures of, food that they get at a great restaurant or whatever, but it's not necessarily thematic is what you're saying with Instagram. It doesn't have to right. be if, if it's a oh. personal account, but with like community organizations or other things, yeah, like we have to be strategic about the stuff we post, but we have to make sure we're posting regularly. Um, okay. But you're right. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks. Awesome. So now I'm going to click through Instagram. Um, can everybody see the Instagram uh, web page? Can someone let me know if they can see it? Or am I still on the PowerPoint slides? We can yeah. see it. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yes, yes. Perfect. So we're going to put some of the stuff into practice. I just opened up Instagram.com and it automatically logged into my Incense account, actually. So you'll see my the back end of my Incense account right now. So this is the home page. This is the accounts that I follow that are um, displayed in images here. You'll see at the top here is the um, stories of the different accounts I follow. So I can click on any one of these to view a story. Um, I. Let's see which one I should click on. Uh, I'll just click on this one. So you'll see um, the stories that they have. You'll have about 10 seconds to view one. If I wanted to, I could click on the post itself that the person viewed. So Evelyn can, someone I follow, posted this. Um, and so now uh, you see their tag. I could click to see the big Instagram post that it came from. So the law will never hold the white supremacist settler state accountable because it would have to destroy itself is the uh, post. And so I don't follow um, VRYE, but this is a post that someone shared on their stories that I was able to read and I could keep reading to see if it's something I'm interested in. Um, but let's go back. So I'm still in the stories feature now. So I could click to see the rest of the posts that the person made. So click through um, and they posted other things. I can swipe the other way to look at other people's um, stories that they had posted as well. But I'm just gonna close this feature right now. But that was us doing a deep dive into the stories part. Um, if I click on the top right on my little profile picture, it can open to a few settings. So I can go to a profile and actually see my profile here. So you see the number of posts, you see my Instagram name, you see the number of followers I have, you see who I'm following. Um, I put a little description on the bottom. 
I say my thank you. So these are profile highlights. We'll get into how to do these later. And so here you'll see the posts that I've shared. Um, I think I shared one reel, so one video that someone shared of my incense products, um, videos. Um, so these were just posts that I had made um, uh, using uh, videos that people submitted of the products they used. Um, and yeah, so that comes up here and tagged. Uh, so you'll see the, that the Tenderloin Expo social media tagged me on an event that I just um, tabled at. Uh, as well as different people who may have tagged me by uh, uh, using my Instagram name. And so, yeah, so these are the different uh, features of the homepage here. And if I wanted to navigate back to the homepage um, or my newsfeed, I could just click on this home icon here and it, would, and it will take me back. This little plus sign would allow me to create a post if I wanted to. So I could drag a photo and start a post that way. This is the Explorer page, the little compass icon. Um, it's what it, Instagram thinks that I would enjoy and um, gives me a way to engage with content. Um, and this little likes button is just the notifications of um, what's happening on my account. So who followed me, who liked things, who commented, um, et cetera, next to the profile page. But, yeah. Um, there's also, if you are a business account on Instagram, it gives you the ability to post and schedule stories with Instagram Business Suite. This is a new recent feature that they have just launched because Instagram and Facebook are now one company. They actually created um, kind of like a business suite that allows you to post on both of them at the same time. So um, that way, anything I post on my Instagram will get directly shared with my Facebook page as well. Does anyone have any questions or specific features they want to explore on Instagram? I have a question, but I think my, I, my question is about um, like time management too. Um, if you're using Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, <clears throat> you have a business as well as your work. I'm just curious how you designate or manage your time to respond in to respond and just how you do it. What you pri how you what you prioritize, what tasks you prioritize, if you delegate certain days to certain ones or mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, thank you for these questions. I feel like these are a little bit of um, communications question as well. Um, but I can share what I do for SDA and I can share what I do kind of on my personal day-to-day -day life as well. But for Senior and Disability Action, we actually use a software called Hootsuite um, that allows you to post on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at the same time. So once I make a graphic, once I make images and things of that sort, I'm actually able to share all account across all three accounts at the same time. Um, this saves a lot of time for me because then I don't have to click on each individual app and, and post things, but rather can just do it in one sweeping motion. Um, and so that's a useful uh, program that SDA specifically bought for me um, to use as a social media manager. Um, and it's also, um, like I had mentioned, many organizations tend to focus on one social media platform and then incrementally, whenever they have time, kind of support the information and narratives that are shared out on, their, on other accounts. So for a very long time, um, Senior Disability Action didn't have a designated um, like social media that they use to post information. And I have elected for Facebook to be that category since the most of our members are on that platform and um, we're able to engage with people where where we can meet them and so only recently has Facebook really started to cultivate a lot of action for senior and disability um, action um, versus for my instance products um, I have a stronger stronger following on Instagram and this is particularly because of the age demographic I'm working with as well as the type of content that I'm doing is more visual heavy or um, photo heavy and so that's why I use Instagram for my business, my incense account. 
Um, in terms of managing the, the time of between the two, I really think of my commitment to senior disability action as a nine to five job. Any sort of thing I do to support my incense and other things of that sort is done outside of that time frame. Um, and so, yeah, it can obviously, it's a lot of screen time sometimes, but um, I balance it by doing my own business, um, by actually creating the incense itself and doing the handcrafted items that don't require any technology. And so I find a lot of joy over just creating these things. Um, and so that kind of offsets the amount of time on, I'm online. Um, but hopefully that starts to answer some of the questions. If you have any others, I'd love to answer them. Thank you. It seems like a big ADD problem, you know, when you've got all the, I mean, I have enough trouble with just different <laughs> emails. Yeah, I have ADHD too. So I need things color coded. Otherwise <laughs> we won't be able to find it. <laughs> Bisma, on the pictures that you post on your personal business Instagram, is it as easy as the procedure to text somebody and then click on the icon and drag from your photo collection into that um, text before you send it? Is it that easy on, the in, on your Instagram post? Yeah, it can be that easy, but it also depends on the type of format that you're downloading that image. Just making sure that it's that .png or .jpg file before you upload it. Mm -hmm. um, and this is because when when files of a different sort of image travel, they might lose their pixels in the process or their quality might decrease. And so, so long as the images that are coming through to you are in those specific um, classifications, you're fine. You can post, you can send it to people, you can post it here, um, yeah. do anything you want with it. So I'm, I'm confused when you say JPG, like for example, I'm looking at the one, this, what, what's on the screen right now and the pictures that you've posted, were they, I imagine that you've taken some personally, taken the photos personally, and then some you've downloaded mm -hmm. from other places. Yeah. So if you're, if you're uh, downloading or you're, I don't know what the language is, when you're posting the photo from another source onto your Instagram that you want to advertise, in this case, your product, um, when you say JPG or JPEG or whatever that is, is that an indicator on the image that you're like, say for example, the lotion or whatever, um, is that the image that you want to make sure is a JPEG mm -hmm. indicated yeah. photo? Whereas yeah. like if, if, if I'm going to if I'm going to post something from my photo collection, I don't think I have the JPEG. Yeah, in, so it will automatically. So if you're doing it from your camera roll, like your phone's yeah. camera roll, it's fine. Yeah. So the image automatically converts to the most um, like optimized image for Instagram. So your phone does that automatically. Oh, okay. So I'm saying when someone sends you an image or a video, that's where you'll have to be more careful to make sure that the quality of the image wasn't distorted in the send. Um, and so- Oh, otherwise, yeah. otherwise it will show up distorted on the Instagram. Oh, that's an important thing. Also, you mentioned SDA has that feature where the same announcement that you compose shows up on the three, right? So if I were to create a Facebook, um, Instagram and Twitter that's social justice oriented and I signed up for SDA, would I get the same announcement on the all three different? So no, it's only the people who are responsible for the communications team have access to that, um, like that, that platform that allows you to do all three. But you could theoretically like sign yourself up as an individual person and for your own group, like create a, 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 a Hootsuite account. Um, so it's up to you. Uh, for, for instance, like for my incense stuff, I don't use Hootsuite. I use um, Facebook Business Suite because I only post on Facebook and Instagram. So therefore I have that platform that allows me to post on both at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's up to you. It's well, no, well, I was concerned about getting the same, the same announcement on three different you know, social media accounts that I have. So if I were to get a 
an announcement from Facebook from SDA, that would be good enough. I wouldn't, I would prefer not to get the same an, an, uh, announcement on Twitter and, and Instagram. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's only that. And we do that strategically because say um, you're on one app, but you don't look at the others. At least you have that information from that one site. So it's like trying to give people as many access points to information. Um, it's kind of the view that we have is we're going to get some people from Twitter. We're going to get some people from Instagram and we're going to get some people from Facebook just on the demographics of who goes there, just on um, who spends most time um, on those apps. And so theoretically, yeah, like sometimes I do see it like I go on Facebook and I see something or I go on Instagram and I see a similar post. But if anything, it corroborates that that information is true and you can see it in multiple places. Okay, so I would be getting the same information on all three accounts, right? Mm -hmm. Theoretically, that's what should be happening. Yes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Hi, this is Dorothy Cook. And uh, what about this 24 hour story? What kind of story is that you put up for only 24 hours? Okay, so I'll, I have more slides that explain these things, but um, oh. basically they're informal kind of posting. So you could like, some people post like photos of food or like just their day-to-day life. Or sometimes um, it's like a very informal post. So instead of having everything kind of elegantly done, like arranged, like in this photo or like, printed in these sorts of ways you can just snap a photo of like your cat and just be like I'm really happy today and you could post that you have all these neat little things of like adding music or adding stickers and stuff like that to your story so it's just a like cute little way to engage um, with like some fun animations too but I'll go over how to use those I have a question Mm -hmm. what do you do with rosehip oil (laughs) <laughs> um so rosehip oil is for your face it's um especially good if you have scarring or uneven coloring or texture differences so it's a very dry oil that like moisturizes your skin really well okay it's yeah, great as a plant too. i use it oh i use it too <laughs> well, one thing of rosehips always you know vitamin vitamin c Oh no, vitamin C is different. Vitamin C is rose hips for vitamin C. Yes, rose hips. Rose hips are for vitamin C. Vitamin C is important for collagen, but it's not the same vitamin C that you get from lemons because that's ascorbic acid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yes, you're right. Yeah, thank you, Regina. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. You don't have to answer this question, but <laughs> this is Dorothy Cook. Uh, my name, Dorothy, means gift of God. What does Bisma mean? Um, it has multiple meanings, actually. Um, oh, okay. Bisma means smile in Arabic. Oh, okay. It also is like the first words of the Quran. So um, it means in the name of God. So it's the first part in the name of or the beginnings of. Yeah. That's good information. Thank you. <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right. Are there any more questions? Otherwise, we'll keep uh, we'll keep packing. Awesome. I think. Yeah. So these are just some slides on how to make an Instagram account. So typically I, um, and if you remember from our digital safety um, presentations, I was like, don't use Facebook to log in to like apps and stuff. This is the one exception that I'm giving you. You can use Facebook to sign up for Instagram. And the reason why I say this is because Facebook has already bought Instagram. They already have your information. So it really doesn't matter at this point. You can sync your accounts to be the same thing. Um, since it's the same people watching over both anyway. Oh, so, excuse me, Linda. Oh, so, um, I, I just noticed today it said that um, if you sign in with Instagram, this little, um, little button that you push, where you'll be on Instagram and Facebook. So should I open that up? You could, yeah, theoretically. That's what I do when I post on uh, for 
like my incense stuff, I post on both at the same time. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe that's why I can't find the Facebook. Yeah, you'll have to link your Facebook though. So Instagram will probably ask you like, which Facebook account do you want to link this to? And so you just have to make sure that the two communicate with one another so that the cross posting can happen. Uh -huh. And we can go over how to do that together, Linda, during office hours, if you're interested in like making sure that your Instagram talks to your Facebook. All right, thank you. And oh, Anna? Oh yeah, in reference to that question kind of, and the other one that was previously asked about, well, will you be getting all of the, the messages, right, in all of them? So let's say we didn't want all of us, since we're following in different uh, medias, can we block it from two of them and just keep it from one and let it in one? Yeah, so that's a really good question. So I, I think I showed you that when you like a Facebook page, you can ask, add them as your favorite or add them so that they become come to the top of your newsfeed. You can do those things for some accounts versus just like a simple follow for others. I think the metric is like based on the accounts that you actually follow, only 30% enter your newsfeed at one like sitting. So there's a good chance of, uh, of information that you will miss in that time. And so, um, yeah, if you do feel like there are too many um, notifications, you're getting too much information of the same thing from all three places, you can definitely try to um, unfollow or like check the setting that says, do not show on my newsfeed or something of that sort so that you limit the posts that you see there. Um, and this can go on like your own preferences of what makes sense and what feels comfortable based on the apps you're using. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, this is Dorothy Cook again. Uh, did we talk about people hacking your uh, account? Did we talk about that already? We did talk about it in the first week. Um, oh, okay. So I forgot it. Huh? Okay. Yeah. You might have missed it, but we do have recordings on digital safety that talk about hacking and how to prevent those attacks. Um, so yeah, I'd encourage you to watch it um, if you have time. Mm -hmm. Where did you locate it? on YouTube. So it's the Senior and Disability Action Playlist. It goes out at the end of every week um, in an email, the link to the playlist. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, well, it's all related. It's all connected to each other. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. All right. I just put a note on there when uh, somebody tells me some uh, negative languages on there on my account oh yeah and so i uh write a note and says if you know me you know i didn't do this <laughs> <laughs> all right i know that we do have more hands up and, and we're getting close to time so i'm just gonna um yeah there's quite a lot of content that we're still covering so if it's a question that's related to what we've just covered, go for it. If it's a question about another feature, I'll ask you to hold on to it. Okay, it's related. I just wanted a summary. Um, I, I'm looking at your example, and it sounds, correct me, because I just want to follow in your footsteps. SDA, you're signed on to three different accounts, right? Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Twitter, right? You, that's your professional SDA related account. And then you have your personal business account, which is your incense account. So do you have a Facebook and an Instagram for that separately than SDA? So you, am I getting that correct? Yes. So um, okay. these are pages that I manage on Facebook, particularly. It's one account. I'm like one person on Facebook, like Bismuth Razan Sayed, but I am in control of multiple pages or groups on Facebook. Oh. So I'm in charge of the Facebook groups for Senior and Disability Action. I'm in charge of my incense page as well, but it's just one account that kind of sits One account. Um, one account. Okay. And then, and then how do you manage the Instagram that's related to your incense business? Because if you're managing information, you've got like the SDA information and then you've got the incense information and then you've got your family and friends mm -hmm. account which is instagram which has a different name is what i'm understanding i'm just wondering if i just want to make sure that i'm understanding you correctly yeah you're you're on the dot i have three um actually four instagram accounts that i run um so i have those four different logins on my phone at any one any one given moment 
Um, same with Twitter. I have three Twitter accounts. I have the SDA one, I have my personal one. I have another organization that I was a part of um, group. So yeah, I have multiple different accounts that I shuffle in between. Um, mm. And then, uh, yeah, so I check like the direct messages on those accounts as well, respond to people on those social media's accounts too. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, well, we don't have time to run through the rest of the slides, which means that we're just going to have to make time on Monday. Instagram is really interesting because it's very different in many ways than the other apps. Um, and so we do have more on how to create a post, how to add the alt text like we had talked about, more information on the stories um, that Dorothy had asked about, um, how to make effective stories. We have a little presentation on. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of information. I did want to make sure that next week we're going to cover what is a social media, or on Wednesday we'll cover what is a social media toolkit. Um, but really quickly, let's just go over um, the tasks for today. Um, so the tasks is to make an Instagram account if you want. And uh, the second thing is to search and follow senior and disability action on Instagram. So that our tag is SD action one on Instagram and try to either like or comment on one of our posts if you have decided to make an account. So those are the three tasks for today um, and they'll follow for Wednesday as well. Um, and then are there any other questions before we move into announcements? Did you go back to the tasks? I didn't have a chance to write them all down. Thank you. Maybe if she learns to do a screenshot, it would help. Oh yeah. Um, it depends on what uh, computer you're on, but you could take a screenshot of the slides, but they're also in our syllabus. So you could literally just pull up the tasks on our syllabus, um, multiple ways of getting the information. Where is the syllabus located? Also in that email that goes out at the end of every week, there's certain links I put in every time. The syllabus is one of them. The YouTube playlist link is another. The native land guide. And then any other like things that come up during class, I put them in. But those staples are in every email that comes in at the end of the week. Thank you. Of course. Um, <clears throat> this is Maureen. I just have a quick question. On Instagram, I just pulled up SD Action One. And is that it? Do you have to accept me or is no. that? That's you it? Okay. Follow it. That's it. You did okay, it. Great. All right. Yeah, it's a public account. So there's no like um, restrictions on who can see our content. All right. All right. Thanks. Can we see your Instagram account without registering for Instagram? No, you're not able to. You might see like a preview of like your name with the photo, but you won't be able to see the rest of the post typically. All right. And so with that, are there any announcements that folks would like to share? Um, I'm fighting to keep the JFK drive open for those people with disabilities and I could use some help is if anybody on this group is willing to help me to call um, organizations to find to get them to to endorse the position that they need to reopen JFK drive so those of us with disabilities and elders can have access full access to the road um, just please contact me my phone number is 415-629 5044 Tomasita 4156295044 Thank you. I need help. Okay. I I need to this is Dorothy Cook again. I need to learn how to do a screenshot. I don't know what that is, but I won't not today, but we'll maybe I can call you at 2.30 or something like that? Yeah, that's totally fine. We can totally do that. Okay, then. Thank you. Of course. Um, let's see. Any other announcements I have? Tomorrow, we have another free Wi-Fi action. 
we are um, planning on going to the Gary AT&T store. Um, we are meeting there at 12 p.m. at, um, so you can take, I think, the 38 or the 38R. Let me find the exact uh, I'll get with you. information. In case you want to join, I'll be there. Uh, let's see. I forgot to include it in our slides today, but I can show you the flyer that I made. Yeah, so it's going to be um, tomorrow from 12 to 1. We're planning on meeting in front of the Wells Fargo um, and CVS on Gary and Arguello Street. And so that's the information. You can take the 38 or the 38R stop. Uh, but yeah, we're just going to be um, showing our demands to the um, executives at that store. So if you can join, that would be great. Would anyone, would, is anyone able to join us? <laughs> Just so I know if, if there's any people I have to call before. Uh, I'm, I'm getting a booster at 1145 in Richmond, so I can't make that. No worries. I hope the side effects aren't too strong for your booster. Yeah. I'll do my best to be there, Bisma. I think that I'm going to be there. <laughs> yeah, I, I have my grandson here. He's on vacation, but he can stay. Okay. He's on for a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I have a question, Bisma. Could you take a screenshot and use it for your picture? Yeah. Okay. You definitely can. Um, another thing about screenshots is to just be careful if it is like an art piece or um, like an, a something by an artist to make sure that you credit them too. Somehow in the comments or, um, or information like that, just to make sure that you're supporting the, where the information is coming from. All right. Awesome. Um, are there any other announcements? If not, class is dismissed. <laughs> All right. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Have a good night. Thank you for everything. Bye. Bye, Bye. <laughs> Bye guys. Hasta luego. Adios, Flor. Adios. Wait, Flor. Actually, Adios, you, todos. <laughs> Flor, can you stay a minute? Ah. Uh, do you want to meet yeah. tomorrow? Uh, what, what, are you, what are you saying? Can you repeat? Oh, Flor, I was asking if you want to meet tomorrow at 2. Uh, for, in person or como? No me... You mean in person or, or how? how? Can you be more specific? Yeah, we can either, if you want to meet in person, we can try going to the Stonestown Mall, if you want. They have Wi-Fi there. Or I can send you a link on Zoom. Mejor por Zoom porque me queda demasiado. I'd rather Zoom because it's quite far for me. Okay, sounds good. We can uh, meet on Zoom at two. Okay, gracias. Okay, thank you. Perfect. Um, Elena or Heidi, would you be able to possibly join me at two tomorrow? I don't know if you're free um, so that we can help Flor. Yeah? Okay. No sé. <laughs> ah, va, va, okay, va a haber alguien. Okay. I'll send you an email. Okay, gracias. De nada. All right. Está bien. Okay. Está bien. That's fine, thank you. I personally cannot, but I think uh, Elena already agreed. So if you can just verify since Elena and I cannot... Um, each other, I am not available, but Elena 
Yeah, she's, like, she she's nodding and putting uh, okay. her hand up, so I think that's a yes. Okay. <laughs> but thank you both. Um, and I'll send an email to Flor and Elena for the meeting tomorrow at 2. Aha, cualquier pregunta le mando a Elena o... If I have any questions, should I send to Elena or, or what, what to do, if anything, before that? Send it to me, Bisma. Bisma at sdi.org. Or you have my phone number, Flor. Sí, sí, porque por algo no ando la tableta o algo, la llamo. In case I don't have the tablet or anything, I will call you. Okay. Okay, está bien. Okay, buenas noches. Adiós. Adiós. Buenas noches. Bye. Adiós. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you.